Good morning, class. I hope you are doing well today. I hope you had a great weekend, and I hope that you were able to use yesterday to catch up and take pictures of your work for me so I can see all the things that you're doing. I am so, so proud of you for working at home and being a good student and being a good son or daughter to your parents. I'm so, so proud of you. All right, so let's jump right in with our saint. Our saint today is Saint Francis of Assisi. As a young man, Francis was very wealthy and he enjoyed the pleasures of life. But once when he was sick, he felt that God was calling him to live as Jesus did. Francis responded to God's call and began to visit the sick in hospitals and to do very helpful things for the poor. When people serve the poor, Francis said, they are serving Christ himself. That's amazing because we say that, don't we? And we get that from him. We say that what you do for others, you're doing to Christ. Why does Francis say that? Francis says that because Jesus said that in the Bible. Jesus said in the Bible that whatever you do for the least of these, you have done unto me. And so Francis says this because Jesus said this. And so when you serve your parents, you're really serving Christ. When you obey your parents, you're really obeying Christ. Francis began to wear clothes like the poor, and he started to preach to people about peace and unity. All the things God created are like our brothers and sisters, he said. Francis often addressed the sun, moon, stars, and animals as a brother or a sister. Once during prayer, Francis had a vision of Jesus hanging on the cross. So deep was Francis's desire to be like his Lord that marks of Jesus's five wounds appeared on his body and they remained there all his life. And he died in 1226. So let me go back to that really quick. His desire to be like Jesus was so deep that Jesus allowed for the marks to appear on his hands, feet, and side. And those marks remained there on his body, on St. Francis's body, until he died. Why? Why did he? It's a good meditation. So it's, it's a good way to think like, wow, these marks, I will never forget what Jesus did for me. And it was a way for Francis to be like Jesus. All right, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Francis of Assisi, you showed us how God created all people, animals, and plants to live together in unity. Help us to love all creatures that God made. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So now I want to read to you our Easter story. And this story is called, God Gave Us Easter. And it's written by Lisa Ton Virgin, and the art was by Laura J. Bryant. And here's the dedication page that we talked about. And this is for Ava and Rena, or Rena. May you know the full promise of Easter, Aunt Lisa. So it looks like um, Lisa wrote this book for her nieces, maybe nephew, but I think nieces, because I think Rena sounds like a girl's name. I love Easter, said Little Cub. Me too, Papa Bear said. It's even better than Christmas. Better than Christmas? Why? And we've said that too, haven't we, during our religion lesson? I think. So what are they doing in the picture? Are they dying Easter eggs? Because on Christmas, we celebrate Jesus' birthday. But on Easter, we remember we get to be with him forever. Forever? Forever. That's why God gave us Easter. I like the Easter bunny, cried Little Cub's sister. And candy, added Little Cub's little brother. The Easter, bunny, the Easter Bunny is like Santa, Papa Bear said. 
He reminds us of gifts and happy surprises in the morning, but God is the one who gave us Easter. Easter is a part of a bigger story he had in mind for a long, long time. How did God give us Easter, Papa? See this egg? Papa Bear said, it's a symbol. It's a symbol helping us remember. Just like the shell cracks open and a chick comes out, we remember that Jesus was in a tomb, but he didn't stay dead. He didn't? No, even death couldn't trap God's son. He is life itself. And God loved us so much, he wanted us to be with him always. We can see signs of his Easter plan all around us. Little Cub and Papa went on a hike. They found a big tree that had fallen over in a storm. God told his people that Jesus would come from one family, the root of Jesse. He was called. Jesse and his wife had children, and then they had children, and then they had children. And eventually, Jesus was one of those children. Yes, little cub, all along God knew he would give us Easter. It's sad that this big old tree fell down and died, little cub said. Yes, Papa said. But when it did, it made room for new little trees to grow. See how the sun shines now without those big branches to block it out? And how all the pine cones fell across the forest floor? These pine cones will spread their seeds and baby trees will grow like this one. So out of death comes life. That's how God wants us to see Easter. I still don't like dying. Neither do I. We were born to love life. God loves life, but sometimes we have to let go of one thing so we can move on to another. For instance, think about this river. Where do rivers go, little cub? To the ocean. Little cub loved the ocean. Yes, the river ends, but it spreads into something even bigger. Heaven is like an ocean for us. Because God gave us Easter, we can be part of something bigger. And even though we walk, even though we talk to Jesus now, in heaven we will see Jesus face to face. So we have to let go of, of this life in order to see Jesus face to face, right? Couldn't Jesus just have waited for us in heaven? A long time ago, God's children wouldn't listen to him. They didn't even believe in him anymore. It made God very sad and angry, so he sent a huge flood to start anew with Noah and his family. In that ark with polar bears and giraffes and monkeys and turtles, And when the flood was done, God promised to never send another one. Whew, said Little Cub with relief. That's good. Little Cub liked water, but she liked land too. It is good. After the flood, God gave us a rainbow. It is a sign of his promise. But when his children, who said that they would follow him, were disobedient again, he had to find a way to keep us connected once and for all. And God wants nothing more than to be close to us because we are his children. So Jesus keeps the promise we broke, little cub. And because of him, God forgives us when we make bad choices. All of us, everyone who believes in him, that's how God gave us Easter. Do you talk to Jesus, Papa? Every day, Papa Bear said, and all day. Does he talk back? In a way, it's like he whispers in my heart. In your heart? I thought we listened with our ears. 
We do, but to hear Jesus, it takes a special kind of listening. Little Cub was silent for the rest of the walk home. She was trying to listen with her heart. She listened and listened and listened. That night, Papa and Mama tucked her into bed. She was still listening. And as her parents kissed her and hugged her, she turned over and remembered she was God's child too. In that moment, she felt cozy and comfy and cared for, almost as if Jesus whispered, I love you in her heart. I love you too, Jesus, little cub whispered. Thanks for giving us Easter. The next morning, little cub said, Papa, I think I heard God last night. You did? He said, putting a, his arms around her. Well, that's the best Easter present ever. What did he say? I love you. Mm, those are good words, perfect words, and they really are what Easter is all about. This is one of my favorite Easter books. I think it's so sweet. And if you would like to have this book, you can order it. It is made by Scholastic and it's God Gave Us Easter. This is such a good one. I ordered it from Scholastic. And I ordered this one too. God Gave Us Easter. I ordered this one too. So these were both from Scholastic and I love them. And I hope that you love them too. All right, boys and girls. So now I want to get started with our religion lesson. And last week we focused on Jesus rising, but we talked about how it's 50 days. So we, um, we don't just talk about it for one day or one week. We can talk about it a lot. We can talk about it all year, really. But this week we're going to move on to the Holy Mass. And I thought how perfect to do this right now because... We can't go to Mass, so we really should talk about it and really get to know the parts of it and um, learn about um, why it's important and just to kind of go over it because we can't go right now. So this is a perfect time to learn about it so that we can know more so when we actually get to go to Mass again, we will remember what we learned this week. So your learning goal is that you're going to learn how we celebrate the Mass and how celebrating the Mass is being obedient to the Ten Commandments and following Jesus' instruction when he says, Do this in memory of me. You're also going to understand that at the Last Supper, Jesus instituted the Eucharist and the priesthood. So, boys and girls, remember your Ten Commandments. Those are God's laws. And which of the Ten Commandments are you obeying when you go to Mass on Sunday? Which one? You are obeying the first three. So when you go to Mass, you're doing three. That's awesome. And they are, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no gods before me. That means that you should only worship God. And some people, so that means anything that you love more than God has become um, a God lowercase g, um, has become an idol in your life. So if you love money more than you love God, then you're breaking that law because you are spending more of your energy, your time, your focus is all on money. And you, you do need to think about money because you need money to buy things, you need money to survive. But if you're only thinking of money and you're thinking of money more than you pray, that's where we have a problem, okay? Now, for, for you, maybe it's, are you playing your video games too much? Are you thinking about, is the only thing on your mind when I get to play my next video game? Um, or when I get to go on the iPad, or when, when I get screen time? Are you spending more time on screen time than you are spending with God? And you're like, well, I don't know how to spend time with God. Boys and girls, yes you do. You do know how to spend time with God. You can spend time with God by reading your Bible. 
saying your prayers, praying a rosary. You can um, spend time with God by coloring or making a picture for him and putting it on the fridge, by listening to music that worships God. There are many, many Christian artists out there who like to sing, and all the songs that they sing are about God. So instead of listening to the radio with songs that are not talking about God, songs that are not respecting God's laws, then you guys should go on, and I don't listen to that music, but I know that it's out there, I know it's on the radio, so if you want help with that, I can tell you some really great artists that um, write some awesome music that I think that you would love. So if you want that, let me know. And sometimes I would play it in class, especially around this time, but since we are not in class, um, I can't play it for you, but that's okay. There are so many things that, there are so many beautiful songs, and maybe I can link it on Dojo some songs for you, okay? So boys and girls, that's how you can spend time with God. It doesn't mean just sitting there. It doesn't mean just talking. There are so many ways. Reading your Bible stories, like I said, painting a picture, drawing a picture, listening to beautiful Christian music. Those are ways that you can spend time with God. But if you're doing other things that are not those things or more of those other things, then that's when God is saying, you must love that more than you love me because you're not spending time with me doing these other wonderful things. Okay, the other one is you shall not use the Lord's name in vain, which means to honor God. And then the third one, remember to keep God's day holy, which is going to Mass. So it's Jesus himself. Do you think Jesus himself would go to Mass? Yes, he says, do this in memory of me. So Jesus himself said, we need to go to Mass. So I want to read from our new chapter, and I want to show you the picture from our chapter this week. Every Sunday we go to church to do what Jesus told the 12 disciples to do. He said, do this in memory of me. You see, the Lord's Supper was the very first Mass. At the Last Supper, Jesus changed bread and wine into his body and blood. And he gave the disciples the power to do this too. The disciples gave that power to other men. That is why our priests today can change bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ at every Mass. And so, uh, boys and girls, when we say Mass at school, when we say Mass on Tuesdays, that is awesome. And you know what? You can go to Mass every day. You can go to Mass every single day. Not now in quarantine, but you can go to Mass every single day. And But we do it at school on Tuesdays, but that doesn't mean, just because you went on Tuesday doesn't mean, oh, I don't have to go on Sunday. Yes, you do. Because Sunday is the Lord's Day, not Tuesday. Okay. So you need to still go on Sundays. And right now, since we can't go, we can watch um, Mass on YouTube. Okay? So you can go, and if you don't, if you don't know um, what channel it is, or if you don't know what the link is, you can let me know and I can give you mine. And we can go, we can um, watch the YouTube video together from my church. Because I want to show you two pictures, okay? I want to show you two pictures and we're going to talk about what's going on. So what it was what is this picture? Jesus and the Last Supper with his disciples. Okay, now let's take a look at this picture. What's going on in this picture? That looks like a priest saying mass, right? So is there an altar in each picture? Yes. Here's the altar. It's the table. And who is present? Is there a cup? Is there bread? Do we see cup? Do we see bread? What is happening to the bread and the wine? Is the Last Supper a Mass? Yes, this is the first Mass. Is Jesus, is Jesus present at our Mass? Yes. What role does the priest have? He acts like Jesus. He is doing what Jesus did at the Last Supper. Were the apostles at the Last Supper? Where are they in the picture? 
Boys and girls, you have seen Mass, and you've seen many priests celebrating Mass at our school. So where do we belong at Mass? We are like the apostles, right? Jesus said, do this in memory of me. In the Jewish culture, to remember means to make present. It doesn't mean to say, oh, boys and girls, remember this in your head or um, like a memory or a picture. Jesus didn't just say, oh, just remember that I did this a long time ago. No, remember for the Jewish people meant actually do it. Don't just remember it, do it. Make present. It's not just thinking of something that happened a long time ago, but it is making it present now. Jesus wants us to be present with him through the Mass by saying, do this. To his apostles, Jesus made them priests at the Last Supper. All priests have the power through Jesus to change bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus to make him present now at the Mass. We should want to be there for this great event. When we go to Mass, we are at the Last Supper. With Jesus on the cross at the resurrection, we are united with Jesus through Holy Communion. Boys and girls, this is so, so special. And like I said before, when, when we don't go to Mass, Jesus has come down from heaven to be with us, and we're not there. And it just breaks his heart. It just makes him so sad. It's Jesus' way of keeping his promise when he said, I will be with you always. So when we don't go to Mass, it makes him sad. And it makes me sad right now that we can't go to Mass. It makes me very sad. And so we do the best we can. We watch on YouTube, but we're not receiving Jesus. And boys and girls, second grade is such a big year for you because you get to receive Jesus for the first time. And if we can't do it right now, possibly this summer. So you still get to do it, okay? And Jesus is anxiously awaiting for you to be with you in um, Holy Communion. So for your activity page today, I want you to go to page 97 and you are going to be um, working on um, how Sunday is God's day and you're going to make a list of ways to make the Lord's day special. Okay, and then you're going to draw yourself honoring God on Sunday. Okay, boys and girls. And since we can't go to Mass Right now, remember all the things I said you can do? I listed a ton earlier about what you can do to spend time with Jesus. Okay? So I want you to list some of those things. And um, I want you to do that. And you can do it now. I think it would be good to do it now. Pause the video and you can work on that. And then we can finish up our religion time with um, singing to Jesus. All right, boys and girls, so we're going to sing. I want to sing for you um, my favorite hymn, and um, I want to go over the words with you as well so that you'll understand what it is that I'm singing because sometimes when we sing, um, the words have we have to pick certain words that go with the melody, and sometimes we have to say words in a certain order that we wouldn't normally speak them, but because we're singing them, we have to change it up. So sometimes we don't understand what the words are saying or what the meaning is. And so I want to go over those words with you, okay? So the words are, how deep the Father's love for us. And who is our Heavenly Father? God, God the Father. So it's saying how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure. So we can't measure God's love for us. It is so much, it is so deep, it is so wide, it is so long, it is, we can't measure it, okay? that he, the Father, loves us so much that he would sacrifice his only son to make a wretch his treasure. And because we're sinners, the, um, the person who wrote the song says that he is a wretch, which means a sinner, a horrible person. And we, I, you are not a horrible person, but because we sin, we're not clean. And so, but because Jesus died for us, we are able to be forgiven of our sins and we are treasures of God. We are sons and daughters of the king, which means we are princesses and princes of the king. So, so by Jesus dying, we don't have to say, oh, we're sinners. We're just these sinners walking around the earth. No, we are treasures because Jesus died for us. Okay? 
And so Jesus um, brings us to glory because of that, right? We are, we are made wonderful. We are made beautiful. But because of sin, we mess up what God made. And so Jesus' wounds, he's the chosen one from God, and his wounds um, make us strong and make us, um, are, we are brought to glory because of the wounds that Jesus bore in his hands, his feet, and his side. Okay? So those wounds remind us of what Jesus did, saving us from our sin and um, so that we can have eternal life in heaven with God forever and ever. So those wounds are precious to us, they're special to us, and we, um, we just, it, it just doesn't allow us to forget what Jesus did. So that's what we're singing about, okay? And then every, um, so tomorrow I'll sing a little bit more of the song, but I'm just going to sing that part that we went over, okay? song I did not finish it okay so that was just the first part I wanted to go over and then tomorrow we'll go over the next part okay and that way we'll get the whole song but I think it's very important to know the words it's important to know what we're singing about so we're not just singing songs just to sing them it's important that we sing them and mean what we sing okay so boys and girls we can pray for our day and we can ask the Lord to take victory over our day. And because the devil doesn't want you to have a good day. He does not want you to have a good day. He doesn't want you to learn anything. He, do he does not like it when you watch these videos. And he doesn't like it that you sing to God. He doesn't like it when you pray. And he wants to use this time at home to help you be lazy. And we cannot let the devil win. Right, guys? So we need to pray and ask um, our guardian angel and St. Michael to defeat the devil so that we can learn and please the Lord, okay? You ready? All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome, boys and girls. So proud of you. So boys and girls, now's a good time to take a break if you um, need to use the bathroom, if you need to get a snack, stretch a little bit. Um, now would be a good time to do that. But if you already took a break, then we're just gonna keep moving on. And our next thing we're gonna do is Super Kids. And so we're just gonna try to um, learn from here from the desktop and um, go over our new spelling words. I wanna show you where those are. And we're going to do two um, activity pages in our Super Kid Workbook today. And it's going to be great. So go ahead and get your Super Kid Workbook. We can practice our spelling words. I think there's like four or six today. So we'll just practice those. And, um, and then we can move on with our lesson, okay? All right, so we're going to go over our decoding words for the day. And so you can just repeat after me, okay? Stolen future, gravy, relay, 
Music, open, table, final. So remember we were talking about um, the first vowel is long and not the second one um, in our words. And um, so you can just, um, we're just, that's kind of like a little bit of review since we're starting a new week. So grab your spelling sheet and we're gonna do our spelling words. And you know that those words that we're gonna do today were from our list that we just went over, okay? All right, so number one that you're gonna practice spelling is future. Okay, number two, music. Just try, it's okay, we're just practicing. Number three, open. And number four, table. Okay, we're gonna go over those in just a minute. Now I want you to write your um, sentence. And after I'm done saying the sentence, you're gonna write down all the words that you remember. But what's the strategy? You repeat it back to yourself after I'm done. So repeat it in your head before you even write any words down. I'm gonna say the sentence and then you are going to copy, the, or, sorry, write down all the words that you remember, okay? But you're going to say it to yourself first then write it down, okay? Ready? I read the final page of the book. Okay, now I want you to write down the words that you remember, okay? All right, I'm gonna say it again, so you can pause the video if you're not ready, okay? I read the final page of the book. And last time, I read the final page of the book. So I want you to put a heart over final and page. And I want you to underline the I um, at the beginning of the sentence and circle the ending mark. Okay, and now um, we're going to check our words and we're gonna check our sentence, okay? No, over here. Or over here I don't know one of those places all right so now we're going to go to our um, go to workbook page 38 so on workbook page 38 we're introducing tricky W words okay so words that start with W and WH can be tricky you need to be careful how you pronounce them and spell them okay so let's go over um, those at the top of your page in your tip box, your blue tip box. And if you don't have your page open yet, you need to pause the video and you need to pause the video, go to page 38 so you can do this with me, okay? All right, ready? Want, where, who, were, what, hold. So some of those were funny because I heard an H for some of those. Underline the words that you heard an H. I heard an H for who and whole. But want, where, were, and what all have that W sound, but some of them have the H. So that's why these words can be tricky, okay? So in your workbook, you're going to write the correct words to complete the sentence. So number one, where or were can the kids wash or hold the dishes? So what the best strategy here is, is try them both. So where can the kids wash the dishes? Or were can the kids write them in the split in the blank spaces okay all right number two luckily it was just what in the glass or luckily it want just 
water in the glass. So I would say luckily it was just water in the glass. And you can look at the picture there to help you. So I would put that luckily it was just water in the glass. So you circle was, circle water, and then you write them in the spaces. And then you're gonna do the rest of the page by yourself. Okay, boys and girls? You can do it. And normally we would I would walk around the room to make sure you got it correct, but I'm not there, so I hope that you are asking your parents to check your work, but not to do your work, okay? Now, go to page 39. These are your spelling words, okay? So these are your new spelling words for the week, okay? Now, it's not very clear. Um, what I just showed you wasn't clear, so you should be on page 39, and you're going to um, answer the questions about the spelling words, okay? So go ahead and do that page today as well, okay? Which words sound the same as would? So you need to read the list, find the word that's same as would, and then write it down. So what word sounds the same as would? Was, want, wash, water, wear, wood. Oh, found it, wood. So that's the last one right above the pink star. So I'm gonna put that for number one. Okay, and then you do the rest of the page by yourself. So we're on chapter 23 in our reader, and so I'm going to read from here today, and then we'll go over the story. Chapter 23, Basketball Season Begins. One day after lunch, Alex said, the snow has finally melted, let's play soccer. He tapped a soccer ball to Sal with his knee. I don't think we can, said Sal, the soccer field is underwater, look at those puddles. The blacktop is dry, said Tick. Let's play basketball. Yes, cheered all the super kids, except Alec. Tick grabbed a basketball, twirled around, and shot. Swish! It went through the basket. Good shot, said Sal. Let's choose up sides. Tick and I will be captains. Okay, said Tick. Alec, you can be on my team. Uh, no thanks, said Alec. I'm, I'm going inside with the lunch bunch. You are? Asked Lily. A minute ago, you wanted to play soccer. Well, I just remembered that I didn't finish my homework, said Alec. What homework? Said Hot Rod. We didn't have, but Alec had already run off. Oh my goodness, boys and girls, what is happening? So where we left, we're starting a new chapter, so it's a new story, because yesterday was the, uh, sorry, last week was the party, and so now we're here. Um, it's a new chapter, chapter 23. So why can't the super kids play soccer? Because the field is basically underwater, meaning that there's so many puddles, it's so muddy. So it's kind of like they're having a yellow day, right? Because the black top seems good, so they can be on the black top. So they're having a yellow day today. Tick says that the blacktop is dry and that they can play basketball. So um, we call our blacktop blacktop as well, but some schools might not call it blacktop, but um, we call it that and so do the super kids, so that's kind of cool. So boys and girls, you know what the blacktop is. It's the outside surface that kids can play on, but it's not grassy and there's no mulch on it. So how can the super kids, how do the super kids, except for Alec, feel about playing basketball? They feel great, they're excited, but Alec is not, is he? How do we know this? Well, everyone cheers, yes, except for Alec. And then Alec wants to go inside. So something's going on here. Why do you think Alec says he's going inside with the lunch bunch? I think it's because he doesn't wanna play basketball and he's trying to find an excuse, um, a reason not to play. Do you think he's telling the truth? That he has homework to do? He says no thanks and he's going inside. So it seems like he's not really telling the truth about what's happening. So we're gonna have to find out tomorrow what's going on with Alec. Or maybe this whole chapter, we're gonna find out what's going on with Alec and see if there's um, 
something that the super kids can do to help Alex feel a little better. All right, boys and girls, so for math, your goal is to be able to add three digits mentally with and without regrouping. So let's just talk about this for a second. If I wanted you to add the number 58 and eight, you know that the eight is in the ones place. You know that the eight by itself is a one. There's eight ones there. So you can add eight and eight and then plus the 50 to give you your answer. Now, to do that mentally, if you, you know that eight plus eight is 16 because that's your double factor, but now I want you to add 50 and 16 together to get the whole number. That's still kind of, okay, now you gotta add it up in your head with the ones tunnel and then the tens tunnel. So we can use the rounding up to 10 to help us. So if I round that eight to 10, well, I can do 58 plus 10 because that's just counting by tens. So um, that's like 38 plus 10 is 48, plus another 10 is 58, plus another 10 is 68, plus another 10 is 78, and you just go on and on and on. So 58 plus 10 is 68. But I really wasn't adding 10, I was really adding the eight, so I kind of added too much. So 58 plus 10 is 68, but God, I don't really need to add 10, I just wanted to add eight. But 10 is only two more than eight. So I only added two extra. So I can just take the two extra away, which, which would mean I need to do 68 subtract two. Well, can you do eight minus two? Yes, you can. What's eight minus two? Six. So it's 66. And I did all of that without writing anything down. And I can do that in my head, okay, if you follow if you followed along my steps, okay? So you can add ones to a two digit number mentally using the add 10, then subtract the extra strategy, okay? And that's what I did. So let's try another one. Let's do 70, 76 plus nine. Nine is so close to 10, so I can do 76 plus 10. What's 76 plus 10? Well, remember, if I'm just counting by 10s, 36, 46, 56, 66, 76, 86. So 76 plus 10 is 86. But remember, I didn't really want to add 10. I just wanted to add nine. So how many extra was I adding? So nine plus one is 10. I was really only adding an extra one. So I can just take that away. So what is um, 86 minus one? Well, what's six minus one? Five, so 85. And once again, I did all of that without writing anything down. I did all of that by being able to add 10 and then subtract the extra. So that's what the strategy is called. It's called add 10, then subtract the extra ones, okay? But you have to know what the extra ones are in order to subtract, okay? So I hope that you're able to kind of keep um, track with me and I know that I can't really show you in my book um, exactly what I mean, but it's okay, we can revisit, okay? So what you're gonna do, I want you to go to, um, let's see, go to workbook um, page three through six and I want you to do those four pages today and um, you're going to be, um, and it kind of lays it out for you. Um, so you're gonna be, and we'll, and so after you work today on that, tomorrow I'll go to these pages and I will do some with you, okay? But don't wait till tomorrow. I want you to work on what you're supposed to work on today. So do pages three through six, do your best, and then um, we're gonna go over them tomorrow, okay? We're gonna go over them tomorrow and I'm gonna go show you um, some more um, strategies on how you can add these numbers in your head. And so um, why don't you do that? Work on pages three through six and if you don't finish, it's okay, we'll go over it tomorrow. So why don't you go ahead and do that and that will be um, good for your math today. 
Boys and girls, we are starting a new week in science, and today I'm happy to introduce to you your new topic for this week for science is insects. Very exciting. So I do not have, so I wanted to read a book to you, but I don't have it, and it's called Fly Guy Presents Insects, and you can access this book on YouTube, and there's a nice lady who can read it to you. And you do need to read it because it's got our vocabulary words and it's our first day doing insects. So I really want you to read the story. And so here is the website for that. And, um, but also you could just, you just go to the YouTube search and you just type in Fly Guy Presents Insects. Read aloud. And it's the first video that she, um, it's the first video listed there. Okay, and so I want you to read that. So pause this video, go watch that video, and then come and see me. And then we're gonna go over our vocabulary words for this week, and I do wanna go over that because I made a little mistake on them, so it's important that you watch this with me, okay? So go watch that video, and then come back and see me, okay? Okay, welcome back. So. This is your vocabulary um, for this week. And we need to fix larva and pupa because I got the pictures wrong. And so when we cut these out, I'm gonna show you how to um, cut them out correctly. So what you can do now is we normally just glue it straight in. We normally never cut these out because this is a perfect fit in our journal, but I do want you to at least, let's just cut the top, the four at the top because we just wanna fix those two. So we're just gonna cut, we can glue in the bottom row just as it is. So let's just cut this top. So we're just gonna cut it in half. Do it with me guys. Don't wait till later to do it. You're already watching me do it, so do it with me. All right, so now I've cut those in half. I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this in. I'm not even gonna cut these up. I'm just gonna glue them in my journal, okay? Now, this row, I need to cut larva and pupa because um, they the pictures are wrong. So I'm just gonna cut, um, so I cut off the egg. Now I'm gonna cut off the larva and then I'm gonna cut the pupa and adult. All right, great. Now find, ah, I just dropped it. Find larva and pupa. So here's this one, get this one, and this one, larva. So you need these two because the pictures are wrong. So watch me cut. Watch me cut, I'm just gonna cut the picture. Okay, see that? I just cut the picture off. And same with larva, I'm just cutting the picture. Okay, so it's like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this on top of this one in my journal, okay? So we kind of mix, match the <laughs> vocabulary words. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one in. I'm gonna glue in the egg and the adult, and then I'm gonna show you how to glue in the other pieces. Okay, I'm gonna do the best that I can, holding things up for you since I can't show you. Um, so grab your yellow journal, your yellow science journal, and you're gonna glue these in with me, okay? All right, so I glued in that bottom row, like I said, and now I'm gonna glue in adult and um, egg. So I glued in egg and adult here. There's a reason why I wanna put the other ones in the middle, which you will find out later, but you put egg first and then put adult last, and look where I put it. I put egg on top of insect, and I put adult on top of um, 
I can't read it backwards. Invertebrae. So you're gonna do that, okay? So now I glued in larva and pupa, and you need to make sure you glue it in the same spot I did. Glue the words here and here in the same spot I did, okay? It's very important. Larva goes next to the egg. Pupa goes next to the adult. And now we're gonna switch the pictures. So I want you to watch very carefully about where I'm gonna put my pictures, okay? Okay, pause the video and glue your pictures in the same spot that I did, okay? So I want you to pause the video, make sure that you're gluing your pictures on the right vocabulary definition, okay? So now that we got all that sorted out and we fixed the vocabulary words and pictures, we're gonna go over them in our science book and um, we're gonna do the first top, well, it's best to do all of them today, but we had to take time to fix that mistake, so. Okay, so egg is a round or oval shaped sac that protects and feeds a very young insect. It is the first stage of metamorphosis. Okay, larva is next. A very young form of an insect that hatches from the egg and it, and it and it's wingless, worm-like, and it eats a lot. The second stage of metamorphosis. Okay, the pupa is the inactive stage of the insect. It does not eat, and it's usually encased in a cocoon or a protective covering while it finishes growing, and it's the third stage of metamorphosis. An adult is the last stage of metamorphosis where the insect is fully developed and can fly if it has wings. And the reason I wanted you to put these in order is because I wanted them, it goes in order. So one, two, three, and four. It goes in order. So I wanted, that's why I wanted you to keep them in order. All right, so this, these four here is the life cycle of an insect. And we call it, when an insect goes through a life cycle, we call it metamorphosis, okay? It is not born the way it looks like so when a sheep is born, it looks like a baby sheep. When a kitten is born, it looks like a baby kitten. But when an insect, it does not look how, it's not born looking like this, okay? It has to go through a process, a change, and that change is called metamorphosis. Okay, so what is an insect? An insect is a small creature that has an exoskeleton and is three-part body head, thorax, and abdomen. And the three parts are joint pairs of jointed legs, compound eyes, and one pair of antenna. So metamorphosis, here it is. It's the changes that take place in an insect's life from egg to adult, an insect's life cycle. All right, boys and girls. So an exoskeleton is the hard outermost covering of an insect that protect, provides support and protection. And, the, and, and it's an invertebrate, an animal that doesn't have a backbone. You have a backbone, can you feel it? But an animal that doesn't have one, um, such as an insect, is called an invertebrate, okay? All right, boys and girls, very good. And we should title it, we should probably title it insects or something like that since we're starting a new chapter, a new week in science. And we're covering insects this week, which is very, very exciting. It's going to be a great fun-filled week. Boys and girls, today we are going to make our very own bug briefcase. Isn't that awesome? And so inside we're going to put all of our new learning and information that we're going to learn this week in our little bug briefcase. And at the very end, we will do the life cycle of the bee. We're not going to do all that today. Let's just assemble our briefcase. So inside this packet that your parents have with your name on it is a, um, one of these folders like this. It should be a tannish yellow um, color, almost like this color. Okay, so you're gonna grab that. It might have some words on it because um, they were from the school. And so um, we're going to assemble it. So 
I want you to grab this packet or with your parents' permission, have them help you get these materials out. So the cover of our briefcase will have this sheet, my bug briefcase, and see how I started to color it? I don't think I finished it, but I started to color it. And I'm gonna put my name here at the bottom, okay? So I knew that was a grasshopper, a bee, and, um, or fly, but bee and then ladybug. In England, where Mary from our secret garden lives, they call it ladybird. They don't call it ladybug. Um, okay, so if you need to pause the video, glue this down. Um, you can color it now, you can color it later. And um, pause the video, do this. Okay, so that's step one. Okay, and now we're on step two. So step two is you're going to find your picture dictionary and your interesting insect information jar. And you're gonna glue those. So here, I'll show you. So I just lifted this down and then I glued my four insects here. So pause the video if you want to and you can pause it and then you can copy and make yours look just like this, okay? And that's, that's all the gluing you need to do because we're gonna do this together and we're gonna do the back another day. But for now, you're just gluing the front cover and the inside, okay? Very good. Now, for today, what you're gonna do is you're going to fill this picture dictionary out. So you're gonna pick four words from our vocabulary. So if I was doing this, let's see, what words would I pick? Probably egg, insect, metamorphosis. I'm gonna pick four, okay? And I'm not gonna just pick one row. I'm gonna like mix it up. So maybe egg, insect, exoskeleton, and adult. You're just gonna pick four. And um, then you're going to write the word and draw the picture. That's it. You write the vocabulary word and then you draw the picture. And of course, you can use your um, journal for an idea for your picture, okay? So this is what you're gonna do today. You're gonna do the picture dictionary from your bug briefcase, okay? Wonderful, very exciting. It's gonna look so nice when you fill this all out. All right, boys and girls, that is it for our learning day today. I'm so, so proud of you. We did religion, super kids, we did math, we did science. We are doing awesome. I'm so proud of you, and I miss you so much in the classroom. And I hope that you are excited to start a brand new week with me. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Enjoy yourselves and be good and be kind. Bye.